Good morning. I am just adding the finishing touches to my parka here. So, we'll see. I'm gonna try and finish this parka today. I guess I can clean it up after. Okay. All right. So I'm going to mark the center of the parka. I'm gonna use a paper clip. Okay, I'm gonna mark the center of the parka. And then I'm going to add, I'm going to start finishing it. So I've got this marked. Here's my center. Yep, here's the center. So I want to make sure that I'm going to um, make sure the fur goes a certain way. So the rough is going this way so i want to make sure that i mark it correctly here is it's gonna go like this right because the fur wants it has to go back so let me figure this out i think that it basically just goes here on the inside so that when you flip it Okay, the fur goes back. Okay, so I'm gonna mark it here in the center and I'm just gonna start skip, start sewing. Um, I wanted to just kind of show you guys how I remember doing this. Um, and then kind of go from there. So I'm just gonna, there's these really cool clips that you can use, but I don't have them. So I like to, I like to sew going um, right to left. So I'm going to start sewing down this way and then I'll start coming back around this way. So again, just to make sure that you know that you're doing it right, you want to make sure that you'll flip your fur out and it, you want it to go back. You don't want it to go forward. So the fur is going this way. It's toward my body. All right, so I'm just going to start sewing. Okay. This is the last. This is the last step. So once I have this on, I'm all done. And um, I will just end up whip stitching again. No, it's called blanket stitching, sorry. These ones, I'm gonna make them close. And you can see that I'm sewing it this way. And I liked, um, you can do for the backing of your ruff, you can kind of do any color that you want. Um, I just wanted to do the this color because it matches. So I'll just keep stitching away. Kind of and then this video I'll share it on my YouTube. So but just gonna keep going and doing this.
Good morning. I'm just working on my bachduk. Just adding the last piece of it. How are you today, Anthony? Good morning, one frozen Eskimo. How are you today? My son, my son is at the sitters today. So he usually, um, they're, they're healthy. So, and he was able to go back. He's usually there because I work from home Monday through Thursday. So I'm usually working from home. Um, and so he usually goes to the babysitter. And then my Benik is at preschool. So, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm just trying to stitch this down. Like I said, you want to make sure the fur comes back. So if you're confused, um, you know, don't start sewing and then do it the wrong way. Because then you'll have to rip. Generito. Generito. So. Like I said, I do a blanket stitch. I don't know the differences between stitches. I, I should probably look that up. I don't know how traditionally they were. Macoriac. Oh. You know Irene? Irene Davis? Is that your Ilakaka? Is she your family? I went out to um, Nash Harbor in 2009. Um, I was there for an um, ethnobotany program. Oh, she's not your family? Oh, okay. Um, I went out to Nunavak Island, Nash Harbor for an um, ethnobotany program. And it was so much, it's so beautiful out there. Oh, for, oh for, yeah, friend of your family. Yeah, but I got to know Irene really well. And um, Abe and Mona David, I got to know them really well. Um, and then their kids and their grandkids. So it was beautiful. I was so thankful for that ethnobotany program. I've got a little bit of a tail on the end here, so we'll see how that works out. Um, I was a tour guide. Oh yeah, they used to have that. That ship stopped there, 2009? Oh, I think it was 2009. We were out there and the ship came and stopped and they were watching us, or you know, we were doing that program. Um, it was when the archeologist was out there as well and he was, they were, um, looking at the art you know like looking at the Nash Harbor and like it was really cool like looking at the artifacts from way back when long time ago but the um the cruise ship people came off the boat and some of them came and explored Eli some of them I don't know we were advising them not to take anything from the island because there was the old um up on the hill the old uh grave sites I don't know. They probably never listened. Okay. I need to buy another one of these. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were telling us. Did they used to say this? There, the old Akatamani a long time ago. There, they called that the dog people, like where the dog people lived. Did did they ever talk to you? I don't know. I never rem. I don't remember the full story. Um, but I remember them talking about that. Okay. You're great. Oh, okay. Oh, he probably knows, or he knew, I don't know. Yeah, I, they were mentioning it to us about it. 
It was so long ago. That was 2009. What year is it? 2022. <laughs> long time ago. Oh no, I have egg in my teeth. <laughs> you guys didn't tell me I had egg in my teeth? <laughs> I usually clean my teeth. My thread, it's um, furrier waxed skein. I got it. Oh, you couldn't see my egg in my teeth. I usually check my teeth. Um, but the it's called uh, Furrier Wax Skein. I bought this long time ago. What year is it? 20, maybe 20, 20, 50. <laughs> maybe like, maybe I bought this 2015, 20, when, I don't know. I can't remember when I started skin sewing again. I started re-teaching myself and taking classes when I was in my young adult because I hadn't made anything since I was a kid. I think I made my first malachai. Maybe I'll get it for you guys and show you, but maybe I'll show you how far I've come as a sewer. Um, I made my first malachai when I was like in second grade. Cloudberries taste like, oh my gosh. Atsalukbaq, atsalk sandberries, we call them sandberries. Uh, they're not salmon berries. That's not the correct term, but growing up, we've always called them salmon berries. Um, but salmon berries, they're so, they have seeds in them. Um, I don't know, they're so sweet and they're so good. And depending on how you pick them, if you pick them firm and let them sit, or if you pick them soft, they're so tasty. Oh my goodness. I made salmon berry blueberry, raspberry, um, a gurak the other day with my banek. So it's really, really, really good. Um, and I like to make my agurak with, um, ooh, yum, I know I had a gurak. We made a gurak on Super Bowl Sunday too. Um, I like to add, with my agurak, I make cheetah agurak, so, I like to make mine in the mixer and I do um, one thing of two good yogurt so I don't have to use as much Crisco, a splash of evaporated milk, sugar, uh, Crisco, and then I like to mix in um, I like to mix in raspberries when I'm doing it in the mixer so that it mashes in there and then I'll add my berries after. But I like to do yogurt in mine. Sometimes I'll do um, mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes though. I remember as a kid sometimes seeing my mom do that when she was around. You ever have it with snow? I've never had it with snow. Filipino living in New Jersey. Oh, well, thanks. I love, um, I love sharing. I think my, I think our Yupik culture is, uh, it's so beautiful. It's just, just the things that my grandma has created. I mean, I have a whole wall of biluguks in my, biluguks are the, the makluks, the, we call them biluguks, the stuff that my grandma has made with just the material that they had and how they created everything. I mean, basically, they just, you know, the way that they used to make bus books was they kind of just looked at somebody and they knew what size they were or they used to measure with their hands. There's a lot of hand measurements that they use. Um, but it's just amazing to me, just... What li with what little they have, what little they had, and how they were able to make such beautiful things. Um, Irene was your, oh, okay, she was the school, I didn't know she was a, I didn't know she was a school cook over there. She came over and she was our elder at Nash Harbor. I really liked, she was showing us all this stuff, like the, 
traditional plants and things at Nash Harbor. So it was really neat, like the gabugaks and the plants and so. Do I miss being a school nurse? Um, I do. I miss my kids so much. Every once in a while I see my kids at school or I see my kids out in public and I just, I miss it so much. I, I'm, um, I'm going to go back and sub, sub at some point. Um, full disclosure, sub school nurses, um, they make like $19 an hour. So obviously like it's not <laughs> The money is not there as a school nurse to sub, um, but I definitely um, will plan on subbing at some, like I'll plan on subbing. So um, it's hard for me to, it's, there's not really the incentive there. Although, you know, like if you're going to do a job, you want to make good money, right? And I'm nurses, you know, for a, a nurse to make, $19 with a, a bachelor's is is pretty crazy to me I mean honestly but I would uh I'm gonna go back and sub for sure I'm I haven't decided like I don't know if I want to go back I think I do you know I miss the kids it's just since COVID has been happening I mean we're you know school nurses they're pretty much you know they're they're COVID they're public health COVID nurses kind of thing. So there wasn't really much school nursing involved in it. Um, and so it was kind of hard. You see how the public reacts to everything. And then it's just seems like it's more amplified because parents want their kids in school. And I agree, but you know, there's just, you just have to, you're looking out, school nurses have to look out for the safety of like the entire school population, which is a lot. So, but I do, I miss it. I want to, I think I'll probably start subbing. I start my master's program here in a couple days, a couple days, couple months. So I'm going to be busy doing my master's. We'll see what it goes. Oh, that one. That one's mine. That's the first um, bashtuk I made. Uh, maybe like 2012, 2013, I think I made that first one. So I was due for a new bashtuk. Um, and I'm just uh, sewing along my rough. Where did I? Oh, I lost you. Okay. So I'm almost done. I think it's too warm here, but I don't know. Maybe I'll wear it when I go pick up my bunnik. I don't know. <laughs> I might be sweating if I wear my bashtuk outside. I just shared something earlier about um, this. I'm this parka, like this, this, all this stuff is kind of self taught, and I've taken classes. Um, oh no, you missed the. I know, sorry. I, um, I'm gonna post everything on YouTube. I'll post all these videos on YouTube. So I'll post my like TikTok lives and pretty much everything that I've done here, I will post on my So Yupik YouTube channel. So it'll be all accessible. And then I'll probably, if I can get my act together, I will probably blog about it on my soyupik.com website. So I will kind of share my process, what I've learned, like the materials, where I got them from with like links. I'll share all that stuff so you guys can see everything um, because I had said I was going to be <laughs> like share all of this with you guys. So I'll share the good, the bad and the ugly. Um, but 
I will share all of those, Alyssa, on my um, on my So You Pick YouTube. I just kind of have to get everything together. Um, so I haven't started my Bunnicks parka yet. No, that's the next thing. I'm gonna have my Bunnick. I think I'm gonna have her help me. She knows how to work my sewing machine. So, which is crazy. Um, oh, yay. So, look. This is how it looks when you flip it. So, I'm going to flip it over and keep sewing. Um, I think I'll have my Bennick help me. So, when I do my, when have her help her do her parka. Um... Cause she knows how to use my sewing machine. I actually got her a little sewing machine, but she gets kind of jumelnuk because it's not as fancy. It's kind of like a smaller start out machine. And she, on my machine, she likes to use the, the scissors on it. And so, and the other stuff on here, but she likes to use the designs. So she gets kind of jumel using her little mikdruk sewing machine. So, uh, I don't know if I should be Jamel at that or if I should be proud, but anyways. So anyways, yeah. So I was sharing that, um, I'd shared something about, you know, all of this, everything that I'm doing, I, um, is everything that I've taught myself or that I have taken classes through the college or I've asked a family friend or a family or friends or you know all of this stuff so everything that you're seeing me do is I'm learning along with you um, I didn't grow up with this I didn't grow up learning how to do all of this if I learned this stuff I learned it in school um, so I just wanted to share that. Um, my babies, my little ones. Um, so I have six kids. Um, my older four are my stepchildren, but they're, I just call them my kids. Um, and so, but my baby's babies, they're four and oh, he's 14 months. Oh my gosh, he's so big. Um, he's 14 months. I missed it. Um, and then my older ones are, shoot, I was just trying to think about my older ones. I want to say, okay, 20, how old am I? I'm 35, 24, 21, 18, 16. So those are my older kids. And they have been, I've been a part of their lives since my oldest was. 13 maybe 12 13 I can't remember it seems like it's been a long time yeah self-taught it it's fun and it's also makes me sad because I wish I would have learned from my grandma and my aunt before they passed I wish I would have like been interested when they wanted to share and maybe they I don't know maybe they did or they didn't want to share I don't know I don't remember I remember my grandma trying to teach me how to crochet when I was little but I wanted to wear her um we called them moo moos they were like these grandma gowns and we used to play with her walker and knock on the doors at the uh old folks home or the senior place where she used to live we weren't interested in doing that stuff so I wish I would have um, but she did teach me snurts, um, so I know how to play snurts, so, but I wish I would have learned. I'm really thankful, though, for my Yupik teachers that taught me when I was in grade school. My Yupik teachers, I, they just were so patient and so kind and so just, I'm just super thankful that we had Yupik, my, our Yupik teachers that we had, the, I call them the OGs, the originals. <laughs> So, your baby is two. Two is a fun age. Like they're all fun ages. They just fun in their own way. Um, my Benick is gonna turn five here in a couple months. She's gonna go to school this year. I'm not ready. 
I told her I don't ever want her to grow up. Alyssa, when did you start sewing or when did you start teaching yourself? I'm gonna have to come back. I didn't come all the way to the corner. These coats, they curve, so I'll show you. So. I was about 10. Oh, you saw, oh, that's so cool. So, wait. Uh, let me do the other side. I don't wanna put it on yet to like, the other side but it's coming together okay so 10 man I'm hoping I want to start getting my bunnick to start sewing if she'll take an interest in it okay wait I showed her my, my bus duke yesterday when I went out there and I had gotten it sewn and I had went out to go show her and I was like, oh, look, I was like, look, look, Sydney, look at my coat. And she's like, she just looked at it. She goes, that's cool. And she walked away. <laughs> oh, my grandma didn't know how to sew. Oh, man. That must have been hard. I know that TB was big back uh, when my mom, my mom and my, my, like my grandparents era, my grandparents age generation, it was affecting them. It wiped out whole communities when the, the TB outbreak and that would, it wiped out like villages. There's an article, I can't remember which village, but the article was the, TB had wiped out or was no it wasn't TB it was the flu epidemic the flu flu when flu hit it was like 1918 1917 and I think missionaries had gone into this community and all the adults had passed and it was just the children in the in the houses and in order to keep those um to keep the the, you know, for them to be able to stay in their village, they kind of paired off all the children so that they could stay in their community. Um, but ugh, if I find the article, I'll share it because it was really interesting because, you know, it's here in Alaska. It happened here in Alaska. Um, my Zoom classes. I live, so I live in Soldotna, Alaska. Um, I teach classes within the state of Alaska. Um, I have always been open to traveling and teaching. Um, and so, um, I would be willing to travel and teach. Um, and I had been willing when I had, when I just had one with two now, it's a little bit differently. So, but I teach my zoom classes online. And then, like I said, I have traveled and taught classes before so and i would be willing and you know i want to start planning to teach more classes i'm teaching a class in bethel here this end of this month to youth um, i'm hoping to teach another one in may um, and so i just love to teach as much as i can um i miss that you taught yourself to uh, 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 nah, 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 uh, wait Agnalenak. Um Yeah, it's uh I it's it's pretty neat to just being able to kind of pick it up. Um uh, let's see. Oh no. Yeah, that and that T B outbreak. It was only what a hundred years ago. You know, it wasn't. It's not like it's old history. It's you know, it's just with, within the last hundred years now that that we've 
um, that, you know, the communities, native communities have dealt with this, have dealt, dealt with it and the things that came with it. So, well, you know what I might do is I think I might go hop on to my uh, Facebook page and go live there for a minute. I am almost done. I'm going to hop on here probably. Uh oh, this is. I'm going to probably hop on here and uh, create, I don't know, a fun little video of something. Maybe I'll fix my hair and wash my face because I'm legit almost done. Um, I'm getting really excited. Um, so I'm going to probably hop on here onto my um, So You Pick Facebook page to kind of show, because I've been hopping on both, this video. I'll end up sharing it on my So You Pick YouTube. Um, and so stay tuned. I'll probably make a fun video of this. Maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I had some ideas in mind. I'm really bad at the uh, fun creation whatever reels and I don't know the trending songs um but I'll be back um you can really see my gray hair <laughs> um I'll be back I'll be back on like I said I'm almost done I'm so close so um I will be back to show you guys I'm probably just gonna go live this afternoon I'll go live tonight I'll share it I don't know I mean and then uh, I've got some ideas for giveaways in mind. I've got some cup cozies and bags that I want, a cup cozy and a bag that I wanted to give away just to kind of like share my page to the world. So anyways, I'm going to, I'll be back. I'm going to go hop on my Facebook live. So don't you, I'll come back when I'm done. I'll fix my hair and I'll go put a bra on. <laughs> So stay tuned. I will, um, I'll be back here in just a sec for those of you that have stuck around. So, okay. Doshu.